Hello, Samaritan? This is supposed to be a Jewish section. Samaritan, released in 2022 and is directed by Julius Avery, who has also directed such films like Son of a Gun and Overlord. And this film is starring Sylvester Stallone, Javon Walton, and Pilo Asbach. Granite City is under turmoil ever since the loss of its major superhero called Samaritan. And the main cause for all that turmoil is a brand new evil villain gang biker that's coming into power in the city who are doing a bunch of crimes in the name of Samaritan's number one nemesis ne nemesis and in the midst of all this city turmoil is little young and annoying Sam Cleary who idolizes the lost hero Samaritan and is constantly on the lookout trying to find if he is in hiding and if you've seen the trailers and if you put two and two together about why you cast someone like Sylvester Stallone in this movie of course, Sylvester Stallone turns out to be the hero! Now, a little warning before I get into my review of this film, I am going to be covering some spoilers, not all spoilers, but there are some things that happen in this movie that I just need to talk about <laughs> for my review because they were so freaking stupid that I can't just be like, oh, something happens, and I don't want people out there to get so offended that I actually talk about the movie and spoil it for everyone, so here's your little warning, everyone. Spoiler alert, we're gonna be talking spoilers in this movie, like you care. This is not gonna be one of the best movies of the year. In fact, it probably will end up on my top 10 worst movies that I reviewed at the very end of this year in December. All right, so all of you have been warned. So yes, we have Sylvester Stallone here, who for the majority of this film, we believe to be the lost hero Samaritan. All because this kid gets into a little trouble with the gang, who apparently is a gang that works for the main nemesis of this movie, so uh, of course, that's you have to have the tie-in that way. There are so many tie-ins and just convenient story plot points that move the story along in this movie that I just roll my eyes. Like, I, I don't even have to say anything because my eye rolls are so freaking loud by themselves. But this kid gets into a fight with the gang, and then Sylvester Stallone sees it, comes out, he gets him, but then they run him over, and of course, because he's uh, the hero, I guess I'll say, he kind of snaps all of his bones back into place, and yay, he's the superhero. He's Samaritan, right? I mean, he's got to be Samaritan. It's, the kid is so in love with Samaritan. He's Samaritan, right, guys? Come on, he's... Samaritan. No, it's definitely obvious that he turns out to be Nemesis, and we actually never find out who is Samaritan at all. That plot point never resolves itself. I thought it was going to. I thought maybe there was going to be a twist in there where the other news reporter guy who's also searching for Samaritan, like, he was actually Samaritan, and he kind of shows up at the end and he's like, oh, the kid, is he okay? But then, nothing. I thought we were going to get a little reveal that, oh, he's Samaritan. But no, he's not. Just Sylvester Stallone, he's Nemesis, and and that's, you know, that's a story. In general, this movie's plot, uh, really just everything about this movie, is so freaking predictable. And being predictable is not necessarily bad, I've stated that on this channel before, but this is one of those instances where it's predictable and the characters in this predictable storyline I don't care about. Stallone plays a, a junker. He plays a garbage man that just takes a bunch of junk to his house and he fixes it, which is, you know, kind of cool. I like those tinkering channels on YouTube. I can kind of lose myself in watching those. But other than saving the kid from a couple of bullies, I really have no reason to care about this guy. He just wants to be left alone. And he eats a bunch of ice cream because that's like the cure for his body when it's going through a, like a lot of pain. And he's doing, like, the Logan thing, and he's healing. He needs to eat a lot of ice cream and water. For reasons. But he does nothing heroic, and then when we get to the twist, when he actually turns out to be Nemesis, whoa, 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 and then I think back to the rest of the film, and I think, well, he didn't really do anything in the entire story to warrant him being the bad guy, the villain. He keeps calling himself in the end, I'm the bad guy. I'm the bad guy, guys. No, not... Really? You're actually fighting the real bad guy of the story. 
you're kind of doing, like, the good things. And I know the screenwriter of this movie was like, yeah, that's the point. It's a whole twist here. It's like the duality of people. Like, some people are good, some people are bad, but there's, like, an in-between there. There's a gray area around everything. Way to go, writer. Like, that storyline has never been dealt with before. Kudos! And then we have this kid, Sam, and, you know, it's... It's one of those tropes in superhero films where a little kid discovers someone is a superhero. There was a movie that came out a couple of weeks ago called Secret Headquarters, and I didn't review it on here because that movie is dog shit. But it came out on Paramount Plus, and it's starring the kid from The Adam Project with Ryan Reynolds that came out earlier this year, and Owen Wilson. And it's the same thing. A kid, actually a group of kids, discover that one of their dads is a superhero. This movie's the same thing, just the dark and gritty version with Sylvester Stallone, and he's like, hey, I'm gonna open up a restaurant and talk about my fights with Apollo. I'm ranting a little bit, that doesn't happen in the movie, but gosh, it felt like it wanted to go there. But unlike that kid from Secret Headquarters that has, like, personality, and he has a presence about him that you kinda like, this kid, though, uh, he has no presence at all. And he's annoying as fuck. He's a one-trick pony, and he's always just constantly looking for Samaritan. And then when he finds out that Sylvester Stallone is Samaritan, he's always, like, watching him and peeving on him. Like, watching him through the window because he lives across the street. He's McFlying him in the tree. And then we get to the start of the climax and the final issue that Samaritan needs to fix. So, the kid goes to Samaritan's apartment... And the bad guy gang is coming over because they know that the guy is Samaritan. So they're coming over to get him and kill him. And the kid's in his apartment. And then he sees that they're coming. And he's like, oh, oh god, I'm gonna get caught. So he manages to escape the building as the bad guy group is coming in. Okay, so all you have to do is, like, run away. You don't run across the street to your home where you live and look out the window with your mom to be like, oh, they're bad guys. Let's stand here in front of the window so they, they, they won't see us. But it, I guess if they do, I guess they'll come over here and, and get us. But, but let's just stand here anyway. It's the most forced conflict in a climax of a movie I have ever seen. All you had to do, kid, when you got out of the first building was run across the street, go to the deli. Buy yourself a ham! Or even better yet, go to the bookstore where that guy that we only saw that one time who's also looking for Samaritan, go to the bookstore and call him. Call that character back in, you know, writing and stuff. But no, the kid crosses the street, enters his apartment with his mom, and he's yelling at his mom like, Mom! We gotta go! We gotta go! They're here! I'm like, why? Why do you need to go? They're not there! They're across the street! Looking at that guy's apartment. They have no idea that you live in this apartment, you dumbass fucking kid. Why are you saying we gotta go? Don't go. Get away from the windows. The movie is one dumb character after dumb character after dumb decision after dumb decision. And when I'm watching a movie where it's all just a bunch of people being dumb and doing dumb things, I immediately get turned off to it and I get so freaking annoyed. This movie was delayed and delayed and delayed due to the start of the pandemic. And now it's finally out, and I I couldn't care less. This movie should have just gone away. If this movie would have been produced by Warner Bros. Discovery, it would have been canceled long ago, just like they did Batgirl. I'm gonna give Samaritan half a stupid-ass Blu-ray. No! No! All right, guys, just a brief little announcement on my channel. So many of you know that recently I did suffer from COVID, and it hit me. It hit me hard. <laughs> like, I'm still kind of recovering from it. I feel, I feel pretty good right now, but there's still the residual stuff from getting COVID. So next week, because I record ahead of time, I'm only going to be releasing one video that's going to come out next week on Wednesday, and it's going to be a whole series of films recommended by Name the Stars, of course. She recommended the entire The Thin Man series, so we're going to be talking about that on Wednesday. So please know next week, 
not going to see a lot of me, but the following week, we're going to get right back to our three or four reviews a week. So guys, if you've seen Samaritan, what did you think about it? Or if you've never seen it before and you stumbled across because of this video, then comment below, let me know what you thought about it. And as always, if you like what you see here, if you like my take on movies, then hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell so you know the next time I'm released next movie review. So guys, I will see you next time on the channel, but in the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care, guys.